This question appeared in NEET PG 2023 and the question describes a 55 year old male who presents with sudden onset of severe headache. This headache he describes as the worst headache of his life and it is also accompanied by photophobia. When you take a BP, the blood pressure is 160 by 110 and when you do a CT scan of this patient, your diagnosis is subarachnoid hemorrhage. Considering these findings, what is the next step in management of this patient? And your options are nimodipine, conventional angiography to identify and evaluate an aneurysm, urgent surgical intervention, and IV monitor. Now, this is a very, very good question because all the options are very close to each other. And so, we will evaluate each options, you know, to come to the right answer. Let's look at nimodipine. So we know that in SAH, one of the most you know, important cause of mortality is severe vasospasm. One of the most important cause of mortality is severe vasospasm. And to counteract that, we give nimodipine. Okay. Let's look at the option B. We know that the most common cause of uh, SAH is a rupture of an aneurysm, okay, especially berry aneurysm. Almost 85% of the primary causes are because of rupture of an aneurysm. So to evaluate, you know, the rupture of aneurysm, the source of bleeding, the extent of bleeding, we will go for a conventional angiography. So this option is also correct. Urgent surgical intervention. Yes, many of these patients will require surgical intervention, but you cannot go for an urgent you know, surgical intervention till you have, you know, the source of bleeding established. So this definitely cannot be the next step of management before we do a conventional angiography. IV mannitol. Now, a lot of these patients will have increased intracranial pressure. And to manage that, we give IV mannitol. But here, none of the signs of, you know, increased intracranial pressure is mentioned. So again, this may not be the immediate next step. Now, this is a very close option. So the best option is B. Okay, because we have to go for an urgent surgical intervention and we have to immediately uh, know, you know, the uh, and evaluate the rupture of the aneurysm. So this is the first option. And then obviously we can simultaneously start nimodipine and IV mannitol if we find signs of increased intracranial pressure. So this was a very close question as I started. So B is a better option than A. Okay, and D and, uh, you know, C, you can com uh, completely rule out, okay? So, again, remember, first we have to evaluate the source of bleeding so that we can take the patient for urgent surgical intervention. So, the correct answer will be B. Now, SAH is a very, very important topic. Let me tell you the most important point about SAH so that you can solve any questions on SAH. So, let's start with the most common cause. So, remember, most common cause is trauma. Okay, but this is a secondary cause. Okay, so in the examination, just remember what is they, they are asking. So most common primary cause will be rupture of an aneurysm. Okay, that also berry aneurysm. Okay, which tantamounts to around 85% of the cases. 85% of the primary cases is because of rupture of a berry aneurysm. What are the other primary causes? So you can have some AV malformations, okay? And you can also have it as an extension of intracerebral bleed. So these are the most important causes of, you know, SH. Now, again, I'm question has been asked what is the most common site in case of berry aneurysm so remember anterior communicating artery is the most common cause uh, you know in cases of berry aneurysm almost 80 90 percent of the cases will be because of rupture or the site of rupture will be anterior communicating artery now another question has been asked is you do a, a angiography and uh, what are the size uh, and where is the presence? I mean, which place it is present so that the you know, chances of future rupture is high. So remember, if the size of a aneurysm is greater than 7 mm or if the position is on the 
basilar artery on the top of the basilar artery these two constitutes a high risk sometimes you may do a, uh, you know the patient is having some you know symptoms like very severe headache excruciating sentinel headaches then you evaluate him doing an angiography and then you find these aneurysms so then the high risk factor you know of impending or high risk chances of the rupture of this aneurysm will be when the size of the aneurysm is more than 7 mm or it is on the basilar artery so these are two very very high risk cases okay and all the aneurysms remember is because of the defective elastic lamina okay and the site of the rupture this also has been asked in the examination is the dome of the dome of the aneurysm okay so we know aneurysm looks like this so it is the dome of the aneurysm which is more prone for the for the rupture so now you are clear what is the most common cause what is most common primary cause what is the most common artery which is involved what are the high risk factors uh, which may lead to the rupture and you know in general about aneurysms what is the defect and you know which part of the aneurysm generally burst let's move forward and look at how these patients will present okay so there can be sentinel headaches what is sentinel headaches excruciating headaches which last for a few seconds up to few minutes and then it will be normal so these are like micro leaks okay so they may be sentinel headaches when the actual rupture happens when the actual rupture happens then the patient describes the headache as thunder clap headache which means he will say that this is the worst headache of my life as it was put in the in that particular question very very bad headache very excruciating worst headache of life so this is thunderclap in fact you should know a lot more about the differential diagnosis of thunderclap headache but the most important cause for thunderclap headache is subarachnoid hemorrhage now you can have other symptoms like projectile vomiting mutual rigidity stupor coma depending upon the extent of the bleeding so i'm not getting into that another important thing is based on and why does this happen why does this excruciating uh, pain happens because remember it bleeds into the meninges bleeds into the meninges hence irritating it and that is why so much of pain is there also based on the site where the bleed is you can have some symptoms so i have told you the most common site is aca okay so if the site of the bleed is anterior communicating artery then you can have ebulia or you can have very classic broca's aphasia or you know hemiphoresis and other focal neurological deficits if the site of the bleed is posterior communicating artery then it is the third nerve palsy which will be seen yes so any cns defect you should know how to you know kind of localize it based on the symptom so if it is the posterior communicating artery you will have third nerve palsy loss of lice reflex you can have retro orbital pain even pupillary dilatation okay so these are the various clinical symptoms another very very interesting thing they will ask about sah is something called as salt wasting syndrome or cerebral salt wasting so what is this so we know that whenever there is an injury to brain you have secretion of bnp brain natriuretic peptide and what it will do it will do what is supposed to do natriuresis so there will be a decrease in the level of sodium and this will cause seizures okay so this is again very very important and they frequently keep asking about this let's look at how do we uh, work up this patient so first things obviously we can uh, get an ncct done 
okay we can also uh, you know uh, get the we have to get the angiography done conventional angiography done okay now to rule out other causes you know we can do an ecg we can do an eco okay uh, if we do an lp in these patients we will have bloody csf also sometimes they will tell it as xanthochromic csf differential diagnosis of a bloody csf or a xanthochromic csf again this has been asked very frequently in the examination so first will be remember the most common cause will be traumatic lp the second most common cause will be sah and third will be hsv in cephalo again a very frequently asked question okay so this is about the investigation before i take you to the management let me talk something very important about this and that is called as delayed neurological deficit in these patients delayed neurological deficits in this patient so there are various mechanisms which leads to delayed uh, neurological deficits in this patients so let's look at each one of them one by one so first is even re-bleeding can occur in these patients second is development of hydrocephalus third we have already seen is cerebral ischemia due to intense vasospasm okay and the last is decrease in the sodium level and why this is very important is when we are going to manage these are the things which we are going to take care of so let's quickly look at the management part so management is primarily surgical so we can go for a ventriculostomy okay and we can put some uh, catheter there to measure the cerebral pressure okay uh, and uh, we can drain out excess csf to reduce the pressure because uh, there may be development of hydrocephalus and brain herniation which is a very important cause of death in these patients then the drug of choice sometimes they will ask so drug of choice in this patient will be nemotipine as i have already discussed that there is intense cerebral vasospasm and to counteract that vasospasm you will give nemotipine so this is the sometimes they will ask as drug of choice so this is the drug of choice again there may be high bp in these patients so you can manage this patient by nifodipine or labitalol okay to manage and remember uh, if you reduce the blood pressure in these patients to lower values what will happen again uh, there is cerebral ischemia so the brain perfusion will be falling down so here the target bp the target systolic blood pressure should be more than 160 the uh, the systolic blood pressure should not fall you know below 160 to in, uh, to ensure that you are able to get good cerebral perfusion so this is here and obviously all the supportive supportive management because you know these patients will be long bedridden so stockings you know heparin unfractionated heparin you will give to reduce uh, the bleeding so all those supportive measures will be a part of management of these patients so this is again a very very important topic very high yield topic and almost every exam there will be with one question on subarachnoid hemorrhage either they can give you a ct scan or they can give you a clinical study uh, case or they can ask you about the management you know diagnosis anything so hope you have learned about subarachnoid hemorrhage in this particular video lecture